you need to be. But we now got to the terminal end of this, uh, of this swamp and just have a look at the vast collection of animals. There's a zebra. They're lying down and as we sort of pan right, there's a water buck. And most of the water buck, this is the largest collection of water buck that I've seen. Here we've got a topi. These are of course the defasa water buck, not the common water buck, although the common water buck is restricted only to South Africa where Tristan is driving around there now, whereas the Defasa waterbuck is a much higher distribution range or much wider distribution range. So there you have some more zebra and some more topi. Lots and lots of them just feeding on the grass adjacent to the swamp. The great white egret and some herons. And in the distance there's some elephant. It always seems like elephant or the backdrop to every picture. Alex Voz was commenting on it yesterday. He wanted to know why we never see elephant close by. Why are they always in the background? I don't really know the answer to that question. It's a good one, but it's a very good observation. As we come around some more, the zebra finally give way to herds of topi. So as we come around some more and more, you'll start to see the zebras thin out. And I think what happens is the grass gets a bit shorter, and that is the topi's preferred habitat. And there you can see the zebra are no more, and then all the topi are there. And there's one lone water buck. Lots and lots of topi lying down with their manna. And then as we come down even more across, the topi give way to buffalo. A bit of dead space there. Carry on going, carry on going. And there's a whole bunch of buffalo. So there's all a bunch of buffalo lying down there. Probably a herd of bachelors, a bull buffalo. All buddies with one another and they are not part of a herd. They would have spent the night there. And it was really cold last night. So I think that they're probably just enjoying the sun and warming up before getting on eating for the day. Because it's the dry season here, doesn't necessarily mean they won't be able to find enough grass. And so unlike the dry season or winter where Tristan's driving around this morning, where buffalo have to eat most of the day to get enough nutrition. Um, here, they can warm up. They have the luxury of being able to warm up and then go feed uh, as well. Now, off to my right, which is also quite special, which I didn't realize until now, this little depression that we have over here is an oxbow lake. And from the Mara. Now, now, Mita, looking at the Mara River here, this is an ancient bed of the Mara River. This is an oxbow lake of the Mara River. And this will slowly get filled up with sediment. And eventually trees will grow on the very fertile soil. And you won't even recognize this for being an old bed of the Mara. But this bed has been seeing the crossings of zebra and wildebeest for thousands of years. Can you imagine? Crocodiles used to live in here and hippos and, uh, and everything. Now... Coming back to your question there, Mita, who was only eight years old, uh, you wanted to know if when the animals get to this Mara River, do they cross and then recross and cross and recross again? Or do they just cross once and then carry on with their journey? Um, they cross and recross and cross and recross again, and no one really knows why or for what reason. Um, it could be food. It could be predator pressure. It could be because there's feeding pressure behind them. Um, it could be just because they feel like going to the other side of, of, the, uh, of the river and want to brave the dangers of the crocodiles and the lions on the banks of the river. It's really difficult to say. Personally, I witnessed the crossing on Sunday and I watched these animals stream out of a grassland for no apparent reason. They weren't being chased by anything. Swarm up on the banks of the river, drink some water. They came primarily to drink some water. Some swam across to join others on the other side. Others didn't and turned around and went back. And one or two got eaten by crocodiles. And it, it was just, a, for me, an introduction into this Mara ecosystem and this, this phenomenon that is the Mara River. For years, I grew up as a little boy uh, watching documentaries from as old as you were and younger, um, Mita, uh, and thought that the river, the animals got to this barrier and then they crossed the barrier and once they were through, that was, their, that was their journey done and they carried on into the grasslands. But that's not the truth. They live in this place called the Masai Mara. They come here because the vegetation is better in the dry season here than in the Serengeti, which dries out. And this river meanders through the middle of this particular game reserve. 
And for whatever reason, we haven't decided just yet, they cross this river and recross again and cross and recross again for the entire dry season, basically. And as the season comes to an end, so from now until three months from now, four months from now, they will live here. And then they slowly start to meander back to the Serengeti because it's more volcanic, less alluvium there. And when the, when the Serengeti starts to get some rain, uh, the grass that comes up there is of a better quality and all the animals that migrate go there. It's not all the animals. And that was also another misconception of mine. It's only the migrating animals. There is a vast number of animals that do not move and stay just here. All these animals that we've been seeing right now are all sedentary. They do not move anywhere. All the animals that we saw around this particular swamp, they live here and they live here all year round. It's just the ones that move, which will move on. Right. Now we're going to carry on. I'm going to see if this road takes me around the swamp or we have to go all the way back because I don't really know. I know where I am, of course, but I don't know what road. It's the first time I've ever driven on it. I wouldn't even know what its name is. Oopsie. <laughs> In the meantime, we're going to send you over to Tristan back in South Africa.